Welcome to tutorial 5. My name is Tom Stevenson and today we're going to look at how we go about updating a schedule. So in my sample file that I have on the screen, we're going to look at how do we go about updating a schedule. The whole purpose of developing a schedule is so that we're able to track it and see where we are, compare where we are to where we thought we should be and see what the differences is. We call those variances, where you have a difference between where you planned and where you are. So in order to do that, we update our schedule. In construction, most projects are updated formally on a monthly basis. Uh, in other projects, it may vary, like uh, two weeks or weekly. Uh, you can be updating the schedule in a variety of ways. Uh, in another tutorial, I'll discuss uh, file saving protocols that you can use to update your schedule. Because in, my, because in Microsoft Project, one of the things we want to be able to do is to document where we were at specific points in time. So as I said, a lot of construction contracts might say that you have to provide a formal update to the client once a month. So if you have to update it formally and provide what we call a schedule narrative or summary of what transpired in the previous month. You want to date that and then you want to have a record of that. So what we do typically is we uh, update that file that month. Uh, we see where we are, we see where the variances are, and then we actually uh, do another schedule, which is a revision or a recovery schedule is how do you get that time back? So if you're behind schedule, you look at, well, we're five days behind. How are we going to get that five days uh, back? And we do that, and we'll talk about that in a different tutorial right now. I just want to cover uh, the basics of the updating process. So the first thing you need to know is, well, number one, you need to have developed a baseline schedule. And the baseline schedule is the plan for the project. This is what you do coming up before you start. And once you've reached agreement that this is the plan, uh, then you move forward. In construction projects, we typically uh, will send out a baseline schedule to the client uh, if they have any comments on it. Ideally, you'd like them to accept it, but uh, people tend to not want to say that they accept it. Uh, they might say that they reviewed it. Regardless, the contractor is definitely going to say if they don't hear back, they're going to say this is the baseline schedule unless we hear differently from a certain date just to establish this is their plan for the project. And that's important because then you can see any variances. And then the next questions you would ask is, well, what caused the variance? Did we cause the variance? Did the client cause the variance? Did some uh, outside force, like a force majeure event, uh, cause uh, this, this uh, delay? Uh, because that has to do with, well, whether we get an extension on time, whether we get uh, extension on time and we get some compensation because it's costing us more or whether we have to pay maybe liquidated damages if that's the type of contract it is. So important is you have a baseline schedule and that's your plan. So what we need to do is once we've entered all the information in this example, I've entered uh, like for a very simple sort of project, some high level tasks. So it's not too detailed, but we can more or less see what's there on our screen. And uh, I've entered some costs so that uh, it has some costs uh, involved with it. And you can sort of see how the costs are summarizing. And I've looked at that in, in a previous uh, tutorial. So the next step that I'm going to do is we're going to uh, set the baseline for this particular project. And because baseline is project based, going along the top of our tabs here, uh, you can see that uh, where it says project, that's where we would find set baseline. So you can see set baseline is over here. So we've got our start date. Everything that's that we were going to use for this uh, is established. I think my start date's going back to last September, but that's okay. Uh, so we've got our, our start date and this would have been when we'd want to start. You know, again, you go to project information, you can put the start date. If I wanted to change this to 2020 or 2021, I could easily uh, do that over there. So in the start date, I am going to uh, actually in the project tab, I'm going to click on set baseline and you'll see that it pulls up this set baseline and you have different choices. Uh, you could uh, set baseline for some selected tasks. If you just wanted Microsoft project to remember those tasks, that would be fine, but I'd like it to do it for the whole project. And to be honest, where I usually 
Uh, I'm just going to close this for a second. Where I use the screen I usually have open when I do this is actually the variant screen. So I'm clicking the square icon box over here on the top left. That's the way I usually like to go switch between screens. And then I'm going to slide down to where it says variants. Click on that. And you'll notice it says baseline start and a baseline finish and a it's not applicable because I haven't set the baseline. So I'm going to go back to where it says set baseline. I'm going to click on set baseline. And I'm going to leave the default set baseline for the entire project. And I'm just going to click OK. And you see now that becomes populated. And what it did was it just uh, copied these items under the start or early start dates and pasted them there. And it copied these items from the finish date and it pasted them there. Essentially, that's, that's, how, it, um, that's how it worked. Okay. So what that means is these are going to stay the same. So you're not going to change these as you progress through the project, but these are likely going to change. And then what's going to happen is it's going, the program's going to be able to measure the difference between your plan start or your baseline start and what is either going on in your project, what's actually been done or what effects what actually has been done has on the rest of the project. So it will show those indicators throughout the project. So if the critical path, the finish date changes, milestone date changes, you would know once you update the schedule. For now, it shows start and finish variance at zero because we haven't done anything yet. So the next step then is to update the schedule. Well, to update the schedule, we have to know what date we're at. So where are we in our project? You, I can't update the schedule for next month because I don't know what's going to happen in the next month. So let's assume here that we've got one, two, three. Let's assume that about a month has passed by on our project. So maybe we want to update this project to um, this date right here. So we're going to update it to, I think that's the 25th of uh, October. All right. So, so we've got October 20th, the 25th of October. And uh, we're going to put that down as what we call a status date. So Microsoft Project calls this the status date. That's the date you're updating the status of the project to. If you've ever worked with Primavera P6, uh, it calls it a data date. Data date, status date, they mean the same thing. It's the date that you're updating the schedule to. And to be honest, that date should at least have been here. So it could be the end of day on Friday. It could be Saturday or Sunday, the 26th, the 27th, or the 28th that we're updating it to. But that date should have passed and it should be fairly recent. The sooner that it, the closer you are to the status date that you update it, the more accurate the information is. You don't want to update the schedule a month after the status date because you start, you, you don't, you're not fresh on what's gone on on your project. It's not as accurate that way. So to put in a status date, well, you notice this little box up here, it says status date. So that's one place that you can put in the status date. Another place that you can put the status date is under project information and it's over here. I find sometimes that when I enter it, uh, try to enter it here, it doesn't accept it. That occasionally happens a little bit, maybe of a bug in certain versions of Microsoft Project. So if it doesn't work there, you can always enter it here. All right. So I said that the status date was going to be uh, October, October, oh, 2019, right? So we want to go back to October and it was October 25th. So I click October 25th, 2019. I click OK. Nothing happens. Don't see anything happened, uh, but it's there because I see it up here. It says October. I know it's in there because I can see it up there. So that's important. So once I update that, I and I've got that as my status date, what I'd like to do is I'd like to see the actual status date line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click in this blank area over here. And you see where it says grid lines? Well, you can customize a lot of different views in Microsoft Project and a lot of different lines and different things that you can have visible. 
I usually myself like to see the status date visible. So usually that means you gotta, you know, right, I'll do that again, right click in this area, uh, select grid lines, pull down the menu till you see status date. And then you gotta say, well, I'd like to see, you know, it's whatever line you'd like to see. I'd like to see a solid line and I'd like to make it red. So I'm gonna make it red over here and I'm gonna click okay. Once I do that, you see a red line appear. So now I at least know that this is where I'm updating the project schedule to. So that means now I can start to determine what happened on my particular project, what's going on on my particular project. So to do that, there's two places that you should wanna be. Uh, you would wanna be under the task tab because that's got to do with stuff to do with the task. And there's a lot of these little helpful tools here that you can update activities with, as you'll see, mark on track and what percent complete. The other thing I typically want to do is I want to go to what we call the tracking screen. And the tracking screen allows me to put in actual start and actual finish date. So I can put those and insert those in for these activities. So in this screen, I personally like to also uh, insert, you can see there's other columns here under this screen. I personally like to insert the uh, duration column. So I'm going to insert column, as we talked about in one of the earlier uh, introductory tutorials, you can insert the column, any column that you want, you just got to know the name of it. I know the name is called duration, so I'm just going to type D for duration. It brings all the activities uh, column names that start with a D. And I'm going to select duration. So I can see all my durations listed out over here. All right, so I'm going to say that uh, with this first activity here that uh, we actually started on time, but it took 10 days to uh, complete. So I'm going to click 10 days and that made that longer and now I'm just going to say you know what it's hundred percent done so you notice that when I did that it's it put in the actual start and ac actual finish dates according to what was already there I made it longer because I said it took longer and then I put in the actual start and actual finish dates so it put a dark bar through here it's no longer shown as critical because if it's done, it's done. It's not a critical task anymore. It's not going to drive your project. You know the date that it started and the date that it finished, so uh, it won't show it red anymore. Uh, it will have moved everything else that it impacted. So if it moves something that you didn't want it to impact, well, you can always change the start date of this, etc. Uh, but it will have moved everything else accordingly. So now that it's moved everything, then the next one maybe I know uh, in this particular case, uh, this uh, particular activity would have started on say October 9th. So I'm gonna say, uh, going back to uh, October 9th, right? And so I'm gonna have it start on the Wednesday. So I'm gonna say it actually started one day before this because we were able to start that. Uh, ahead of time and I'm going to say that it actually took a little bit longer to complete so it took 10 days and I'm just going to once I say the 10 days I'm going to say it's 100% done so that's done so I'm looking at when these activities started and when they finished and I'm updating them accordingly the other way I could do it is I could put in that for example I could say this one actually started on October uh, October 11th right? You see it moved it. I'm going to say it, 11 days is it's still on track for 11 days. So I'm going to leave that at that for well, actually, I'll, I'll show you a little trick with this. So you know, you could calculate and say, how, what's the progress because theoretically, the progress should be here because let's assume that it's the end of day Friday, I'm updating this to Friday. So that's showing me that it's not quite done. So in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the mark on track icon over here and I'm going to click uh, mark on track. And when I do that, you see it updates it to the Friday. So it updates it to the Friday that it's done up to 
um, the Friday, so it's marked on track, but it's not 100% done. So it's not quite 100% done. It's still got Monday's work to do. So that's fine. That's what I wanted it to do. Rough in plumbing. Um, let's make this a little bit interesting. Let's say that rough in plumbing, they never even showed up. So they never even showed up. So they were supposed to show up here. They didn't show up, but they promised they're going to come on Monday. So I could deal with this several ways. I should reschedule it because it still has to be done. I shouldn't leave it back behind uh, the uh, status bar. I should now reschedule that, that it has to be done at some point in the future. So I'm going to put rough in plumbing. I'm going to, I'm going to move it. You're going to see here, I'm going to move that. And I'm going to move it. See where it says incomplete parts to the status date? So I'm going to try moving that incomplete parts to the status date. I could move it one day, one week, four weeks. Custom is you could move it however many days you want. If you click on custom, it asks you how many days you want to move it forward. But I'm going to actually move it to the status date. So watch this. So this is rough in plumbing. So you see it moved it to the first working day after the status date. And the first working day after the status date is Monday. And this is now a critical activity. It's driving the project because it's now become on the critical path. So that's having an impact on our date on the project. I would want to know why this didn't complete on time, to be honest. And usually what I do in this screen, I usually insert the indicator column. I've mentioned in uh, the other tutorials, the indicator column is really a good column because it shows you if you've done anything to the activities. And so you notice here, you got check marks. Well, that means they're done, right? So these are done. This one started, so it's not complete, so it doesn't have a check mark. You notice there's this little box here. We'll talk about this in another tutorial. This is a constraint. When I moved it, I actually put a constraint on it saying it's going to start after the status date. Or if I moved it and said it must start on Tuesday, then it would be a constraint saying it's going to start no earlier than Tuesday. So we'll talk about constraints in another uh, tutorial. What I can tell you about constraints is you try to avoid them as much as possible. Don't put a lot of constraints. You try to avoid them. It, it, it play, wreaks havoc with your critical path because it locks things in and doesn't allow the program to function. But because I put it right after the status date, and because I'm at the status date, I'm not concerned with having a constraint there. I would be concerned if I started putting a whole bunch of constraints down here. Uh, that would be problematic. So we've got that there. And I said it'd be good to uh, know what happened. So I'm going to double click on rough in plumbing. And you'll notice that this brings up the task information box. And the task information box it has a series of bits of information on it from predecessors to resources uh, to advanced. Remember we talked about that with calendars where you could apply a calendar. Uh, so the task information box is very useful for that purpose of seeing things. It's also useful for putting a note. So see that? It's a note. Rough in plumbing. I want to know why the plumbers did not show up, right? Uh, so I could put in something to the effect that uh, rough in plumbing delayed uh, do due to uh, design layout error by consultant. This might lead to a change order or something else being added to the project when we go to recover the time or with the work that's coming up. But it's good for me to know uh, what caused uh, this delay in here. So it's very helpful for me to know what actually caused the uh, delay to occur here. So as we uh, go through this, we can see that we have uh, the schedule brought in and we've got it updated. We've got these other two activities here that need to be updated. Let's say that those activities went the way we expected. So that means they started and they finished on those dates. I don't actually have to do a lot of work here. Maybe you have a bigger project and you've got like 25 of these and you've entered your oddball activities. They've moved everything around the way it, the way it, you intended on your project. And then you've got a bunch left that you need to update. 
Well, sure, you could go in and you could go put in what the actual start date and what the actual finish date is for each one of these manually. But if they're in the right spot already, the quick way to do this is to just click the square icon box. It selects everything. And remember, remember the mark on track icon that we have up here? If you just click on it, it will update everything that is to the left of your status date and it will not update anything to the right of the status date. So that's the nice thing about putting in a status date. You can use the mark on track tool to help you mark things on track up to the project uh, status date. So like this 91%, 100%, 100%, 100 that comes into play. And so if I click there and I select uh, the mark on track, watch what happens. It updated these two activities. It did not update rough and plumbing because rough and plumbing is now to the right of the status date. And if you had 30 activities, it would update them all. So it's a quick way of doing that. And because they're done, they're done. If they were partly done, it would also just say what percentage they're done up to uh, the status date. The other thing that you could do too, by the way, you could just type in 100%, 100%. Uh, whatever uh, amount that you want uh, in these particular rows. But what I like about the mark on track is it does the calculation up to the status date mark. So we just updated the schedule up to the status date. And I'm just going to click the save button so it keeps it. So we could check now our cost screen and we could see that the cost has gone up. So there's been uh, additional costs. So there's been a variance in our costs. And that's likely to do with any of the variable costs we've assigned, like the site super, the project manager, the um, laborers, that is a variable cost that's adding on to our project. So that would have automatically gone in there. If I slide down to my resource sheet, uh, I could also see my resources listed over here and I can go to uh, the square icon. Yeah, so we can see here where the variances in cost are. So we've normally when you go to your resource sheet, it'll probably be on entry. I think I already had it on cost. That's why it opened up there. And if I go to cost right now, you can see uh, that uh, I've got additional um, our, I've got additional cost here because of the variable cost. So my site super, my PM, they've gone up in value or cost. It didn't change my laborers because I didn't have them assigned to those early activities. I think I had them assigned later on. So I'm going to go back to my Gantt chart. And in my Gantt chart, I can see that now I've updated things. I know things aren't good. I just don't know how how bad it is, like how far, how much are we delayed? I got a rough idea in my head, but I don't know exactly. So I'm gonna go to the square icon box, right click and slide down till I hit the variance screen. And then I'm gonna pull this to the side and I can see that, you know, some activities like rough and plumbing uh, had a start variance of 12 days. Uh, part of that was driven by uh, the, um, install metal stud partitions be an extra day then this took an extra day but most of it is in the rough in uh, or rough in plumbing that's causing this large delay so again that's where i'd be looking for uh, relief potentially if i didn't cause that or if it wasn't my subcontractor's um, problem so you notice it's delayed 12 days but the project's only delayed six days that's the nice thing about having a well-developed critical path you can see how much these impacts actually affect the project. So the delay in the rough in plumbing and install metal stud partitions, really this would be one day, this would be five of the other days on the critical path, it means that this rough in plumbing had float before the project started. Uh, so before, on, if I go back, if I went back to my original baseline schedule, I could look at my original baseline schedule and I would see that it probably had five or six days of float to begin with. And I've consumed that float and now it's delaying the project by six days. So I know how much the project is delayed, but you know what, looking at it in this view is not necessarily the best way to look at it. I also like to use what we call the tracking Gantt. And the tracking Gantt's a very, very useful tool. Schedule, most scheduling software uses it. Primavera also uses it. 
Uh, so you just slide to the left, as I said in our other uh, tutorials. And if you haven't seen our other tutorials, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and then you can look at all the, you'll see all the listing of uh, the different Microsoft Project uh, tutorials. I'm also going to be coming up with some tips and techniques that will be shorter videos if you're just looking for something specific. But right now, I'm just going to slide down. Do you see where it says Tracking Gantt? So I'm going to click on Tracking Gantt. Now, when I click on Tracking Gantt, unfortunately, it brings me back to my entry view. I usually like to be, when I'm in Tracking Gantt, I usually like to be in the, in the Variance view and the Tracking Gantt. Now, right now, you don't see anything. Remember how, right now, I'm showing in 2020, uh, today's date. So if I want my projects way back in 2019, if I want to come quickly on the screen, the quick way of doing that, rather than scrolling endlessly, is as long as you're in the task tab, click on scroll to task and it'll bring it right up on your screen. So now you can see very quickly what's on your screen and you can uh, see the tracking Gantt. And what the tracking Gantt is very helpful, I find, because I'll, I'll usually have this pulled to the side and that there. And maybe I'm just gonna make the text bigger in case any of you have trouble seeing the uh, text. I'm just gonna go to format, textiles, you don't have to worry about this, but it might make it a little bit bigger for um, you to see it a little bit better. The downside is I lose some of my Gantt chart when I make it big. Uh, so you can see the you can see the start and finish variance. So it started on time, right? It says zero zero. So the bottom bar and the top bar are aligned. The bottom bar is the baseline that was the plan, and the top bar is what's going on or what's changed. So in this particular case, I see that this is delayed by a day. And that's why it says one day here. And then that's pushed this out, right? So that's pushed uh, this out. It would have pushed uh, this one out, it pushed this one out. This was, We put in a later start date on this one, uh, rough and electrical. So that's why it's even an additional day because when we updated that, we made it another day. And so that's why that's two and two. Uh, and then of course, the. The plumbing, it's not, you can't even see the bar because the other bar is way over here. So it's 12 days difference from the start or the finish is 12 days difference from the finish. So I know when the finish and the start are the same difference, I know the duration didn't change. When the finish and the start are different, then I know that there was a difference in the duration overall between the activities. So you get to know uh, what's going on when you start to look at it enough and you see that. And questions you'd want to ask is, okay, why did it start late and why did it take longer? These are fundamental questions that you want to ask yourself. And this is one of the huge advantages of uh, tracking and monitoring your schedule is, okay, why did it start late? Because we want to make, we want to document it and we want to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Say you're doing a 30-story building. Well, why did we start late? Is this going to happen again? Is this going to happen on every floor? No, it's not. Then that's good news. Uh, it could. Then what do we want to do to stop that? Or if we plan for it to take five days to uh, form and pour a floor and it took seven days, well, how do we make sure that it stays at five days for the next 30 floors. Because if we don't, the next 30 floors are going to be two days late. That's 60 days. So it's giving us a lot of valuable information in the updating process. By the way, you notice the status date isn't shown here. It doesn't show when you switch to the tracking screen. So you have to go back to grid line. So all I did there was I hovered over this blank area. Or the other thing too, under the format tab, you see grid lines there, it's the same thing. I just find it's a little bit quicker to just right click. It doesn't matter what screen I'm in. I don't have to go to any tab, pick grid lines, and then pull down. You only have to do this once. Once you have it shown in both screens, it should show up. As another caution, I would also say, so you pick the line type and the color. So you, Got to have all of those. If you forget the line type, it won't show up. Once you've uh, picked that, now it's there. If I switch back and forth to different screens, it should show up. Sometimes if your video card's a little bit slow, you might find that the line disappears. If you want it to come back, just type in a blank cell, press enter anything, uh, delete it, whatever, and it will come back. Um, it will come back uh, for you to uh, see it. So I find sometimes it disappears and. People are wondering, where did it go? It'll come back. 
Okay, so that's really the process of updating the schedule. And then at this point, I know I'm six days behind and I know that I'm uh, with uh, the variance of five, $5,000 over budget in this case. So six days behind, $5,000 uh, over budget. It gives me a good idea of where we're at on our screens. So hopefully that's uh, given you a good idea of uh, the updating process. So just to recap quickly, you got to uh, have a baseline schedule. So the other thing I really want to stress is you got to remember to set the baseline. If you don't set the baseline, you've got nothing to compare to. You won't see any variances in cost or time. Uh, if you're just doing a, a time-based schedule, you won't see any variances in the time. You got to remember to set the baseline. And uh, that's fundamentally important. If you make a mistake, by the way, and you set it and it's like, oh, but I've got a few more things I got to do, you could always clear the baseline and make sure it's set. It will always tell you if you go to set baseline, it'll always tell you that it was saved on such and such a date if you've saved it. If it doesn't say that, then it's not been set as a baseline. The other way place you know is if you go to the variant screen and you see under the variant screen, this has dates. If it doesn't have dates and it's got NA, it's not been set as a baseline. So you wanna make sure that the baseline is set. Then you want to give a status date. When are you updating the project to, right? I usually like to show the status date. So I put in grid lines and I pull this down to where it says status date and then it'll be listed. I'll put the line and the color. I have to do it in both the tracking screen and just the regular Gantt chart screen, uh, but then I have it. So this file would then be saved and dated. So we'll, I'll talk about that. It deserves another little tutorial to explain the file saving protocols, but I would update this file. I might call it job number 25, uh, office remodel. And I'd put the date that it is. So it'd be October 25th. So that is my step that, and I would call it update, Job 25, office remodel, October 25th, 19, 2019. That would be the update. The next step, which I'll, I'll do in another uh, tutorial, will be the recovery process. How do I get the time back? How do I get the time back? So I'd be looking at that process of how do I how do I get the time back and get this project back on schedule? Because that's the whole purpose of doing this is to see how much we're behind schedule and what can we do to fix it? You're trying to be proactive and do these things very early on in your project so that you can be successful over the long term. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And again, subscribe to my YouTube channel and have a great day. We'll see you on the next tutorial. Bye for now.